Hi everyone, uh, today we're going to be showing how we uh, harvest and filter our rainwater for drinking. Okay, so um, the rainwater comes off the roof, goes into a net, into uh, the IBC tank. The net just collects the leaves. The rainwater drops down into the IBC tank. We've got these ones covered in a um, tarp so the sunlight doesn't get to them, make them go green. Uh, and it keeps it quite cool here where these trees are, it's, the water stays nice and cool. Uh, all the pipes are lagged up with this insulation. And um, we've actually got the top three IBC tanks on a platform because we're using a water um, borehole pump. The borehole pump sits into the insulated tank. If we had the tank spread out the same height on the ground, we couldn't utilise a lot of the water because the pump doesn't draw from the bottom, but actually halfway up the pump. So we would miss drawing half the water in all four tanks. This wasn't for this tank. We actually hadn't thought about getting a borehole pump for this. We got a well dug and that's another story and it didn't work out. So later on, we'll talk about that. Okay, so this borehole pump goes into this tank, it doesn't actually pick up water from the bottom, it picks up water from up here. The reason being, obviously, you don't want sediment being picked up from a hole in the ground, it, it picks it up from here. But being in this tank, yeah, it's only using half of it, which is fine, because we just have to keep on topping it up for now. But later on, and also against frost, you'd really want one in the ground, not one up here. But we were in a bit of a rush, so this is what was cheap and we could do at the time. So this all fits together with compression fittings. It's got inserts in the 32mm uh, pipe. It's MDPE pipe, which is for drinking water. And uh, that's that end, I think. Um, oh, the other thing is it uses magnets um, uh, for low resistance, so you hopefully get a good lifespan out of it. So to um, fill this bottom tank from these three that we've got up here, we've just got a simple tap and turn that. You can actually hear the water flooding into this bottom tank. And we've got to keep an eye on it, otherwise it'll overflow, but at least that one's full. And, uh, and then you're ready to go. This is a secret, don't tell anyone. The water comes in from here, so it's gone under the ground, under the van, in through this pipe, up through here, we can turn this off if we want to do any work on here at any stage. Um, there's a pressure tank, so you don't have to wait on your water coming out your tap, um, which is good. Uh, this is a sensor to say what the pressure is, um, so it tells this computer up here. Get that in. There we go. Uh, this computer comes on. You can actually ask it what psi you want. So you can say, I want, you know, 45 psi. So you can push the water all around the land. So you can push it all around this four and a half acres of land, anywhere it needs to be, um, which is handy. Um, and also it's got a dry, a dry function. If, if the borehole runs dry for any reason, it will stop and it will wait for it to replenish. Our washing machine plumbed in here. So it's out in this outhouse and um, so we can use that. And we don't filter the water to that. It doesn't need to be, it's not that dirty. Um, Watering plants, got another hose there. And then we're coming to, into um, filtering for drinking water. So we've got a, a big blue, this 20 inch housing, and it's got a five micron filter in there. Okay. So these are the um, filters. Uh, this is uh, a five micron polyspun um, filter. Uh, in here it's uh, the equivalent, but it's just a one micron. It goes in this one. This one's a carbon block filter, and that's for um, 
pesticides and things like that. So if anyone's been spraying in the area, you don't end up drinking it. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that just goes in that one. The middle one, we've got um, the ceramic filter, which I'll just take off and show you. Just got to release the pressure. We've got these pressure points on here, so you don't get a blast of water. you can just scrub those with a, a, um, a scouring pad. They do give you a little a little brush for them. It's completely useless. It's like a, a thing you'd use for bottles, but that sort of shape, and it really doesn't touch it. Um, so it doesn't look very professional some of this as I've got all different bits and pieces trying to hold it on. I did buy some of these brackets but the, the filters are all different sizes and shapes. The filters are all different shapes and sizes and some are off the wall more than others and, uh, and you've got to try and go around to tanks and things and, and, and this pipe trying to wangle it round and stuff. So, um, I actually used a uh, tree tie to hold this up here. Uh, there's a tree tie on there. It's all held on. It's been there for two years, so I'm not really worried about it. And it's not permanent, permanent. There's other things that we want to do later on. If we build a house, this is all going to be improved, but this gets us out to fix. And I haven't really got to look at it. All I've got to do is clean that filter. All just compression fittings, uh, and they're quite cheap. There's a place called Pipe Stock online. Um, I don't get any money from them. This isn't an advert. It's just that they were quite handy and you could find everything on there really easy and it wasn't expensive. So we, so we got these, um, uh, the water housings and the filters come from um, wreckingwatersofteners.co.uk. Um, I don't get paid for saying that again. We don't, you know, I'm not getting, this isn't a free advert for them or I'm not getting anything out of it. So it's just to say it was just easier to get it from them. I looked around at the time. I can't think why I went with them at the time. Um, it might have been because of this came in such a neat bundle, all the three, and some of them do them all separate. It might have just been that reason. So that's the pump working, drawing from the IBC tank. This is a little maintenance man sign, I'm carrying a spanner, and the red light will come on if there's a problem with the pump uh, and we don't want that to happen because that'll be a worry I don't know how to maintain anything on this so uh, it would have to go in and be fixed don't want that to happen and here we've got the on off switch and this is just to um, choose which bar of pressure you want to run out it's on four bar and now the pumps kicked in to deliver that pressure right so we're going to clean this ceramic filter using this scouring pad sponge um, i have to run water first to clean the filter because once the water's off when I take get the filter off I won't be able to clean it for just from the tap so I have to run a bucket of water first and then clean it from that right so here's our filter uh, clean scouring pad I like to take them all off individually to do this it's easier right so that's those off. And I'll just dip it in the bucket of water we've got here. The scrub. See the grime starting to come off of it. Thank you. 
there. You can probably see the difference there. Clean one, dirty one. And it makes such a big difference to the uh, the way the water comes out the tap. You'll, you'll know when they're dirty because it, it goes a bit slow. And then you go, right, that's time. We need to give them a clean. Which is quite reassuring really, because at least you know it's doing something. So I just gotta clean all these in the same way. And it goes back on. Okay, that's it. So they're clean. They've just all got to be screwed back into this and uh, it's ready to be put back in. If you've got any questions about anything you've seen, um, just write them down below and I'll uh, get back to you. got to try and find there's a little bit that sits inside the end of this and you just got to sit it over that and you put it back in there just make sure it beds down on it and that's it put this back now that they've been cleaned there's a better flow rate so you get a glass of water pretty quick nice clean fresh water and it's cold Lovely.